You're listening to the King of the Fourth podcast, offering in-depth analysis on all things Boston Celtics with your hosts, Jim and Mike Quigley. Mike, regular season is over. Uh, playoffs are, uh, you know, starting this Saturday for the, the Boston Celtics. They're going to tip off at three o'clock at the Garden. Uh, but the playing tournament begins tonight with uh, Miami Heat and the Atlanta Hawks, uh, the winner of which will face our Boston Celtics. Uh, good morning, Mike. Um, you know, I would say happy start to the playoff day, but this is actually an extension of the regular season, according to the rules. So this is game number 83 for the Hawks and, and the Heat starting tonight. And um, I'm, I'm sure we're both going to be watching to figure out um, who the Celtics are going to see on Saturday. How are you feeling? Feeling great. I think it's nice to see the Celtics end the season playing so well. And if I'm Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, I'd be worried about playing time with the play of Sam Hauser and Peyton Pritchett. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're think, worried too much. <laughs> I think that they, uh, you know, they, they might have to really step up here or these guys are going to take their minutes come postseason. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for the playing tonight. I think it's a great addition to the NBA playoffs. Uh, I think that I, I, I don't think Atlanta has a shot, but you never know. Um, we'll see what happens. Miami seems ready. They're already talking trash to the press, which is interesting for a team that's really underperformed. It hasn't been that great this year. Uh, Jimmy Butler is out there talking. Uh, and the NBA is certainly... Got a lot going on. If you if you've been watching, there was a a fist fight oh, yeah. in Minnesota. Uh, Rudy Gobert is not going to be available to play the Lakers, which is <laughs> I think that's insane that he was. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think he should have been. But who cares? Uh, he won't be playing. Um, and yeah, I'd love to dive into you know how we think the Celtics perform this year. Kind of grade out individual play, team play. Um, and we have some exciting first round matchups across the NBA, uh, four, four or five seeds in, in both conferences yeah. typically are really good. Uh, but the three, six, the three, six out West, and even the two, seven out West is going to be intriguing just because it is the Lakers. So, or, or it should be the Lakers. If the Lakers lose, I think it's tomorrow night. Uh, that, that would be disappointing if you're a Laker fan, but also not shocking either. Uh, so I'm, I'm really, uh, I get excited for the playing tournament, especially this year. Cause I think there's some talent on both teams. You know, Trey Young playing tonight and Murray playing tonight. You obviously have Adebayo and Butler going for Miami and then Minnesota is loaded with talent. They just can't seem to get it together. So uh, yeah, that was a lot, um, but I'll let you, I'll let you react to that. And Yeah. The NBA the last day was Funny. I mean, you, you had Rudy Gobert throw a punch at Kyle Anderson and like kind of graze his jersey, and I guess it continued over to the locker room. Um, you know, what did uh, Minnesota give him five picks for that guy? <laughs> he's not even playing in the playing tournament because he's suspended. No. And then uh, you had uh, Bones Highland uh, yep. go after Mason Plumley over in LA. Um, the irony is both teams won those games. The Wolves beat the Pelicans, um, which was actually a really good basketball game. Um, and the Clippers um, beat a really shorthanded um, Phoenix Suns team. You, you know, needed almost every minute of the game to do it. Uh, it I don't know if it, the, the what ended up happening at the end of the game is a good thing. I, I don't think it makes a good case for the playing tournament because if you have teams falling apart, uh, like that at the end of the season, maybe they really shouldn't be in the playoffs to begin with. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it certainly made things interesting. And I, you know, I wonder how the Timberwolves respond, you know, if they don't really like Rudy Gobert, do they kind of rally around this against the Lakers and make it a more difficult game? And, and you're right. It would be a disappointment if, for LA fans, if they went down and, you know, the Lakers have, had one of the best records in the league since the all-star break wouldn't be a disappointment for me i um you know don't mind seeing the lakers struggle and lose at any, any point yeah so i guess what we'll start with then is just you know the playing tournament tonight and that um 
Atlanta, uh, Miami game. I think, I think you're correct in saying that Miami should be the favorite. Uh, Trey Young has really struggled historically against Miami. I think he shoots like 30% from the field. Um, I think Atlanta has a lot of kind of soft players. Um, to be honest with you, I, I'm not sure if they're going to be uh, fully engaged and ready to go, even, not just tonight, but even if they, um, you know, when they play Friday night to, to get in. And, and if they're lucky enough to in the playoffs, they've been 500 all year. Um, they've, either, they've been a game over, a game under for the last three months. The point differential is pretty much at 500. The, the, the definition of uh, just a mediocre team, they bring in Quinn Snyder and he's gone 500. Uh, I think he's 10 and 10 or something like that. Um, that said, you know, Miami isn't world leaders either. And they've played down to competition, um, or not high up to competition all year. Uh, they've been very poor against the Eastern Conference um, all season long, where, you know, the flip side, they, they've kind of done a great job against the Western Conference. They have some tough veteran guys, um, but only a couple of them can still play now. Uh, you know, there isn't a ton of talent on that Miami team. Um, and they, I, I think, you know, you, I didn't realize they were talking. Uh, um, I'm sure it's about being underdogs and things like that. But I, I guess that's something they feel they need to do to, to try to fuel themselves. I don't know how much oh, that no, is over. Jimmy Butler was pretty much guaranteeing the win tonight and advocating to be MVP of the NBA. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I don't think he could be an MVP on a 46-win team or whatever they were. Um, yeah. So, and Bam, Bam Adebayo should be defensive player of the year. I can't yeah. stand that team. I really can't. Yeah, no, it's – it's. I, I, I don't think, you know, as it pertains to the Celtics, either of these teams – have really much of a shot at all, not only to win the series. I, I I just don't think they can make it much of a series if the Celtics continue to play the way they are and if they remain healthy. Um, you just saw the impact over the last you know seven games or so, almost the entire month of March, when Rob came back after that Sacramento game. Um, they just look like a different team. You know, he's is he's flying around. Um, the first four or five minutes against uh, Toronto, against the Raptors, he was he was amazing. You know, he really was. Um, he was his help range was from one side of the key to the other. He was getting out on corner threes. Um, he was impacting the offense by just drawing so much attention. And, and I know Toronto didn't show up, which is fine. But I, I'm just more looking at more of um, just Rob's explosiveness, that athletic ability that we haven't seen. I think it was over this last few games, Mike, it's the first time I felt like he looked like Rob of last year. You know, since he's come back from that hamstring injury, it feels like he looks like the Rob from last year. And they've got him into the playoffs healthy. And if he can remain healthy, to me, the Celtics are the favorites to get out of the East. And, um, you know, I'd prefer to have them be the second seed and healthy um, and maybe, you know, just being okay since the all-star break. And I know March, they were the best team in the league, but just being okay since the all-star break, then, you know, going in like they did last year where they were playing the best basketball in the league and not having Rob Williams ready to go. I'd much prefer this situation. And I, I think, I think they're locked and loaded. Um, and I, I feel as confident as I have really, and at almost any point in the season with the Celtics team going into the playoffs right now. Yeah, to the point where you almost have to manage him in the first round. If you're able to take a quick 2-0 lead, maybe yeah, you don't have to. thought, yeah. Yeah, um, it's something to consider because I think his minutes are going to be so valuable later on in the playoffs than they are against a team that you could – you could probably sweep without him if you're playing your best basketball. So he he is the key for me long term. Rob is the key. You're seeing, I agree, you're seeing a difference in the way they play on both ends. He all he also adds passing and offensive rebounding. And it's it's so 
obvious how quickly they don't get killed on the boards once Rob gets comes back and once Rob's healthy. Defensive Rob, rebounding too, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, it, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, in those second, third chance baskets that we saw against Cleveland and New York, I mean, it was so obvious against the Knicks and against the Cavs where they were just getting killed. And, and there were some other moments in there too. So, um, yeah, I see it with Rob, and I think it makes them the favorites. In my opinion, I'm sure they won't get picked. People will pick Milwaukee to win it all. And, you know, Giannis is great and whatnot, but you saw the Celtics, what they did in Milwaukee. I think if, with, with a healthy Rob, the Celtics have to be the favorites. And yeah. with that, and I think it's important that if, if there's opportunities to manage his minutes in the playoffs because they're winning games – I think you have to do it um, until you get to a point, you know, that second round when you're facing the Philadelphia and it's full go, Rob playing as much as he can. You play in Milwaukee, same thing. But this first round, I think there's an opportunity to, to not fully extend them if you don't have to. Well, and that's the thing, like, I think they're the favorites with Rob, but there still remains a possibility. Can he get through these playoffs? You know, can he actually get through them? Um, and we're all going to be kind of sitting on pins and needles throughout, hoping that's the case. I, I just think he's, you know, obviously Tatum and Brown, you can't afford to lose for any extended amount of time, um, you know, at all. I think that if Rob stays healthy, concern. I think if Rob stays healthy, the other players, you know, you don't want to lose anyone. But you, I think you could survive injuries and still win a championship if you if you lose anyone else. I, but this this is just the guy to me. And you know, you bring up an interesting point. Do you sit them in, in if they get up two zero or three zero? Probably, I would think more three zero. Um, I, I don't know. You know, I, I guess it's it's how he's doing, how he's feeling. And you know, remember these playoff games usually give you an extra day's rest. So you usually have a couple games before each game. Um, they're going to have almost a week off since Rob last played, maybe more than that, before they tip off on Saturday. So I, I think it's something I wouldn't rule out. Um, and, you know, I, I, think it's, I think everything needs to be on the table in terms of keeping him healthy. So, you know, it's a real interesting thought. Um, I, I don't know the best answer to that. Um, but I, I do think it's something that, you know, they should consider at the very least, uh, if the Celtics get in that situation and we're, we're being pretty presumptuous that they will be up three Oh, or whatever, you know, even in the first round. Um, I, 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 I do feel good though about this team. I, I, I think they, you know, they're playing really good basketball on both ends. I think a part of a real big key of it is what you mentioned, Mike, is that they're rebounding the ball much better. Um, you know, and when you rebound the ball much better, you can get out in, in, on offense, um, off misses, and create havoc on the other end. Um, I even look at that loss against the Sixers, um, where Embiid was absolutely extraordinary. The guy was fucking insane. Uh, you know, 50-plus points. I think he had 52 of the 104 points. Um, he was doing it all from the, you know, the foul line, which makes it really hard to even double. You can, but it makes it really hard to double from there. Uh, and, you know, mid-range jumpers. You know, this wasn't even a guy that was barreling down. He was just beating you with mid-range jumpers and, and shot over 80%. You know, just an unheard of game. Um, and, and, and tip of the cap to him. But as far as the Celtics go in that game, they won all the hustle stats. They won the rebounding. They won the turnovers. They run the fast break. They won getting to the free throw line. They had more assists. They had a higher assist percentage. Um, they just shot like shit. They they shot way more shots than the Sixers. I I feel like they played well in that game. I feel like they moved the ball. I feel like they got out and ran when they had the opportunities. And and that's just I, I think with the exception of the Wizards game really over these last two to three weeks. I think that's how they've been playing on the whole. And, and it's it's kind of contagious. You know, you saw even in this last game, no one played. But you, you saw guys that 
you know, might need to be called upon, continue to play that style in Muscala or in Hauser and Pritchard. And those are guys that might have playoff moments, whether it's due to injury or just, you know, you, you need something, a spark to get you going. And certainly Hauser should find some playoff minutes at, at some point, um, being a move shooter and a guy that's not as bad a defender as he's really made out to be. I, I, um, I just, I like where they're going right now. I like how they're going. I know at times there were hiccups. I know they lost games that would have gave them the one seed. I, I would just say um, if this team is healthy and it's coming down to a game seven in Milwaukee and they lost um, in Milwaukee, I'm just going to – maybe we'll look back and say, oh, imagine if that was in the garden. I'll also tell you that Milwaukee is probably just a better team overall all year if they were able to beat this version of the Celtics and get the number one seed that the Milwaukee Bucks earned it and the Celtics didn't. I, I don't. And the Celtics probably just came up short, um, and it, a lot of it probably had to do with them in the playoffs, but not finishing them earlier. Because I, I just see this team as the most talented team in the league, um, with the caveat when Rob's playing. But I, I just that's where I am right now. And to that point, Mike, do you want to grade? And and just to the listeners, so they know, we are gonna dive more into the first round matchup but we're going to do it more once we know actually who it is so that will be in the next spot i think what we're going to do now mike if, if you're up for it is let's grade kind of the the management of the celtics and their um, top rotation players um we'll try to go through this as quickly as we can but i don't know if you want to start with brad stevens and joe missoula uh yeah i do but before we do that just i think something to keep an eye on is Kalen brown cutting his hand yeah, good so we point. We talk about injuries and managing them as the Celtics go forward. We'll see what happens when Saturday comes around. Uh, but it could impact. I mean, it's his hand, so it could impact his ball handling, his shooting. Uh, certainly not the best timing for him to cut himself. And uh, the, I know they're saying he's going to be back next Saturday. Um, I'm no medical expert, so I'm not going to make an opinion about it, but I just hope he's okay for for the Celtics. Yeah. So, you know, something yeah, I, that I think probably the key is is he practicing, um, you know, tomorrow, Thursday, or Friday? You know, yeah. and is there a bandage on his hand still? Like, I, a part of me is wondering if we see him Saturday. Yeah, and that's a big deal because yeah, it's sure a three thirty. It's a three thirty Saturday game. And I don't think those are always easy to get up for. Um, so that has disappointment written all over it to start a series. It's not a great spot for a first game for the Celtics. And if you're down Jalen Brown, it's certainly going to make things a lot tougher. Yeah. You're talking 28 points a game, 50% from the field. So um, as far as grading out the team, uh, we're starting with Brad Stevens. I think – his move from Malcolm Brogdon was, was huge this off season, bringing him in, uh, not giving up much, giving up the first round pick and Aaron Neesmith and to Neesmith's credit, Neesmith had a nice season as a starter in Indiana, but I think the Celtics certainly won that trade talking about having arguably maybe the best six man in the NBA this year, someone in the discussion for six man of the year, a ball handler that they didn't have against golden state, a guy who can score, on his own, which they didn't have really coming off the bench in that series. Um, that was a slam dunk. And I think, you know, I, that's the big move I look at uh, as the biggest impact. Um, re-signing Sam Hauser was big last off season. So I, uh, I think I'd give Brad like a B, a solid B. The team looks great. They're in contention again. Uh, they should be in the NBA finals. So he's doing a good job. Um, as far as Missoula goes, this is a first-year coach who got thrown into a horrible situation, uh, but also a great situation uh, to have an opportunity to win a championship, uh, but really came into a, a really toxic environment to start with what had happened with Ime. And I, I have had my disappointments with Joe and how he coaches all season long and my faith in him isn't great, but I think the guy deserves credit. Um, the team, 
basically had the same record that they had last year. Players are, some players are overperforming offensively coming off the bench for the Celtics. Like a Sam Hauser really took a step forward this year. And he really did a, an effective job managing Al Horford and, and Rob's minutes this year. Um, so again, I'd give him about a B. I think, I think he's done a solid job and this team is in contention with him as the coach. So. Yeah, I, I would Brad, my grades either a B plus or an A, probably an A. Um, you know, he's built this team with play that is playoff ready. They just in the top eight rotation, and I guess Hauser would be nine, but in the top eight, you don't have guys that you look at that you can target on either end. Um, that are, are gonna be a weakness on either offensive defense. He's got two way players all over the floor. His guards are big, they're strong, they're fast. Um you know, and you look at other playoff contenders, you know, whether it's their first round matchup against the Heat or who they could face in the, the Eastern Conference Finals, they will have guys on the floor that you can target. And I, I think that's just a huge advantage in the playoffs. He built this team to win in the playoffs. And, um, you know, now it's on the players and the coach, right? Uh, I think the one thing I would have liked to have seen him do differently potentially is maybe be more aggressive um, for a big, but even the guy we'd like, Jakob Poto, you couldn't match Toronto's, um, what well, Toronto was given up anyways, because they were in pos- better position to give up a better, much better draft pick than you are um, for this season in the fall. Um, so, you know, I think he's done a pretty good job on the whole and, um, you know, I think it remains to be seen if he can bring in some young players as the CBA changes to keep this rolling. Um, as far as Joe Missoula goes, the positives. He managed the roster in a way where they're healthy going into the playoffs. There hasn't been that uh, in Boston in a long time. So he deserves credit. You know, I know that's a team organization philosophy, but he's the head coach. And, you know, Al Horford looks great. Malcolm Brogdon really hasn't made it through a season in a long time. And as a player, he deserves credit, but he's ready to go. You know, played 70 games and ready to go. And Rob Williams, who we talked about earlier, um, is healthy and ready to go. So I think that's, you know, the number one thing for me. And uh, that's a real positive. Um, There's still question marks, you know, and we don't know how he is with his player development. You mentioned how's he getting better which is good. But on the whole, there isn't a lot of young players on this team where there was, you know, you're looking for those next steps. There's not blue chip players or first round picks. It's a veteran laden team um, that if they're improving at this point in their careers, it's got a lot to do with, with the work they're putting in on their own in the off season. It doesn't have as much to do with Missoula. I don't think um, they are definitely in game management uh, questions throughout the season, end of the game situation, timeout situations, you hope he's grown from that to an extent where he doesn't hurt them in the playoffs and big spots. Um, that, that remains to be seen. As for a grade, you mentioned all the important stuff, uh, the really toxic, toxic situation that he may put him in um, earlier in the year and how his team responded right out of the gate and how they closed. And th- those are probably the two most important parts of the season, how you start and how you close. And they were really, really good in both ends. Um, so I'm going to give him an A for the season. I have serious questions. But this thing could have imploded. Uh, guys could have been limping in to the playoffs right now when they're not. And to me, those are the most important things for a head coach to kind of um, keep under control. And he nailed both, in my, in my opinion. The bigger test for him now is what he does in the playoffs. And now the end game management stuff and the timeouts and those things really, really matter way, way more. Um, I never got worked up as much. There was a couple of games this year where I was really pissed when they didn't perform, but when they lose regular season or things didn't work out, um, I didn't get frantic because I knew the bigger picture was about health and how they're looking going into the playoffs. Um, but now those things do matter. <laughs> you know, a, a bad timeout or a, um, you know mismanagement of you know end of games, it could cost you a game, which could cost you a series. And every 
thing is much more magnified in the playoffs, and we all know that. So that's where I am with him. Mike, let's talk about Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, top two guys in the Celtics. Um, your thoughts on where, how the season went for them? I could start with Jason Tatum. I thought the season started off great for him. He came out really determined. You could see it by the way he was playing. Um, I do fault him a bit for how we came out after the All-Star break. Uh, he wasn't playing well. He didn't look fully engaged, or he might have been injured. I'm not sure. But it wasn't just his shooting. I just think his overall play for a big stretch there when he came back from the break wasn't great, and it took him out of the MVP race. Um, so overall this year, I think I got what I expected from Jason Tatum. He's an All-Star. He's a all NBA type talent. And I think it's really to be determined um, how he performs now when it really matters here in the playoffs, because it was pretty up and down uh, last postseason. obviously against Milwaukee he had a huge moment in game six. Uh, and then after that though, he was just okay. And sometimes really bad uh, going forward after that game. So there's a lot to pay attention to as it comes to Jason Tatum. As you know, I love him as a player. I'm rooting for him. Overall this season, I'd give him about a C plus. Um, C plus. I think he really, yeah, he's I think he be really all played. NBA. How can you give a guy that's going to be all NBA a C plus? Because I expected Jason Tatum to win the MVP. That's uh, why. Yeah, but he's still so, going to be all NBA. Okay, like, but it's my grade. It's my grade. B plus. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, you, I'd hate to have you as a teacher. Yeah, uh, so I'm giving Tatum a C+. Well, I you think you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Prime me a river. Um, I, I'm giving him a C plus because I, I do think that his play come All-Star break might have cost the Celtics the one seed. And you saw a guy like Giannis locked in all year, and you saw what that did for Milwaukee. And I think that did make a difference in how I would grade Tatum. Uh, for a full season of work, of work. And I grade him tougher probably than ev- anybody else in the Celtics. Uh, so when I look at Jalen Brown, overall, I think it's about a B or a B plus. I think he overperformed this year. I think he took a step forward. And I think there was a stretch of play here down the second half of the season where Brown was the best player on the Celtics. Uh, and I'm really hoping that his hand is okay because he's a guy like Tatum that I'm really interested to see how he's going to perform in the playoffs because Brown was playing at an electric high level for a long stretch here uh, in the second half of the season. And so, yeah, I'm giving Brown about a B plus. um, And I think he, he over, you know, I think he went above what my expectations were for him this year. And he definitely deserves to be on at least the third team. Uh, If I had my way, I think Brown's a, a second team all NBA, especially if it was positionless. Yeah, I, I the things I really liked about Tatum is the number one thing is his free throw rate went way up, and it just continued to go up. He, he's up, what is it, almost eight attempts or over eight attempts a game. Where a couple of years ago he was shooting about two free throws a game, um, and so on bad shooting nights he's still ending up with twenty five points because he's getting to the line. Um, he went through a stretch there, I think, and you're correct in saying after the All Star break where. He didn't get to the line as much, and he didn't play as well um, and, and for whatever the reason was. But for the most part, it really gives me, um, you know, optimism in the playoffs that he's going to be a factor even when the shot's not going in because he should be able to get to the free throw line. Uh, as long as he goes to the hoop with the thought of making the basket, he's going to he's going to get to the line more times than not. And and I I just think that's a huge step in his game that we, we, we didn't see even as early, uh, you know, as not too long ago as a couple of years ago. So to me, that was the biggest step forward for him. Um, You know, he was an all NBA guy. He had points in the seasons where he slumped. Um, I think that's part of the course for him. Uh, That's happened throughout his career. And I think we're going to continue to see it. I think he's a bit of a streaky player, which isn't, you know, ideal, you know, it's, that would be the next thing I'd love to see him get out of control. But I I kind of think that's sometimes built into a player's DNA. He averaged 30 points a game, um, which is either, you know, the first time in Celtics history or the second, I I forget exactly what it was. If Bird actually averaged that back in 88, 
Um, I thought it was like 29 point something the average, but that's an impressive number. I don't care if scoring is up 30 points a game is an impressive number. His three point shooting was um, subpar all season long, unfortunately. And um, I thought at times he let the referees get into his head too much and it, and it cost him, um, you know, as a leader on this team. But on the whole, you know, if a guy's going to be a first team all NBA, which he's going to be, if you're going to be in the top five of MVP voting, you got to be at least a B plus uh, area. And that's where I, I kind of put him and Jalen. Um, Jalen was fantastic all season long, too. Um, you know, his turnovers still aren't great. Um, and that is going to be a concern in the playoffs. Uh, he sometimes still gets loose with his dribble, even though it's better than what it was. His passing is better than what it was, but it's not as reliable as you'd like to see it for a guy that's going to be the second best player in the playoffs. So yeah. as this thing goes on, um, those issues in his game will be magnified. And, and hopefully he does a much better job of managing that. Um, you know, I know we looked at him as being the, you know, really the best player over the last two series. But I think we tend to forget how many turnovers he had in those series, uh, particularly in Miami. He, uh, you know, game six or whatever, or five, I forget whatever it was. I think it was game five with the Celtics lost and Brown scored a ton of points. He also had like nine turnovers. Um, so it's. Yeah, yeah Victor Olin Depot gave him fits. Yeah. So that needs to be better. I think he's improved. How much he improved, we're going to find out. We're going to find out now. Yeah. The, the, and we are going to find out because we, we're definitely going to find out because, you know, yeah. Miami knows how to play him. They're going to make him go to his offhand. Uh, they, and that, that's what they do against Brown. So we're going to see just how much Brown has improved yeah. uh, right away. Um, and again, I'm not huge on Miami, but I think they, they do play the Celtics well. They, they, they get up for it. And they, the team is led by a coach who's been in these situations, prepares well. So we're going to see it right away. Um, with how Brown is going to respond to that kind of ball pressure. Yeah, we'll see it. I, I just don't think Miami has the guys like they had last year. I know Old Depot's still on the team, but he's been bad and he's been slow all season long. Um, and their other guys are really small and not that physical. So it's, um, you know, they can try to get physical with Jalen Brown, but as you saw, after we've seen all season long, smaller guards, he really has no problem with. He just, He's so big. He's so strong. He's so fast. Um, so we'll see if Miami can do that this year. Um, I'm they're certainly going to try. I don't know if they're capable. Um, the, the next the next group is just Brogdon, White, and Horford. I'll take them together and smart Mike. I'm going to do these guys quickly. Brogdon, White, Horford were all fantastic all year long. I give White an A. Um, just, you know, I, I think he stepped up when guys went down all the time. I think he, you know, kept his head um, in the right spot where other times players would have been pissed for sitting out an entire fourth quarter when he was rolling. He continued just to be the consummate pro teammate. Um, and he's as solid as they come. He, he's, he was the best perimeter defender this year by far. Um, he was the most dependable player this year. Uh, the third I, best player on the team. Yeah. What a great move by um, Brad Stevens last year to bring him on. He's fantastic. Brogdon gave you everything you wanted, played in more because he played 70 games. Al shot 46% from three. They were all great. The guy I was actually disappointed in um, out of that quartet, I thought Marcus Smart's defense was not as good this year. He missed a lot of games. Um, earlier in the year, he was playing like a true point guard. He came back after the all-star break and started playing like a two guard, which this team does not need from him. Um, that settled down over the last month of the season where I thought he played better, but I thought his play was erratic um, at times this during the season. And he can't fall back into those habits during the playoffs because they have just way too much talent. They don't need him to do those things. You know, they don't need him to force up a shot with 12 seconds on the shot clock, keep the ball moving as a point guard, force another action. Um, those are the things he needs to do. So those three Horford, Brogdon, White, somewhere between B plus to A for all of them. For Smart, I'm in the C range. Um, and Grant Williams, I'm probably – I don't want to spend much time on him. I'm in the C range there too, Mike. I think for 
White and Brogdon, I, I think they're both, for me, an A to A+. plus. As you talk, talk about guys who were playing smaller roles on this team and carried the team at some points this season, Brogdon came in asked, being asked to come off the bench and not really be the man at all and to just play smaller minutes, shorter shorter minutes, less minutes, and asked to put up a volume of scoring um, and do it efficiently, and that's exactly what he did really all season long uh, did ex- really he, he did even more than what I think people expected of him with the amount of games that he played. And then Derek white has been clearly the third best player on this team. When guys were hurt, he was the best player on the floor uh, and really showed us how talented he really is. So I look at them as two guys who went above and beyond what they were asked of this year and are a big part of the reason why the Celtics are in contention the way they're going to be Al. Again, yeah, I agree with you, Jim, like a B-plus or an A. I think he's continued to just play his role really well all year. Um, you know, maybe he'd have a, a solid A if he didn't give up 52 points to Joel Embiid. <laughs> but, no, <laughs> he's Al's, been, he's Al's, been, do it on his own. That's <laughs> Al's been terrific this year, and it's had some huge moments where the, the game against Philadelphia when they came back yeah. and he's hitting threes on the fast <laughs> break. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Smart. I think Smart took a step back this year defensively um, and kind of lost his role, as you mentioned, during the second half of the year. And that's going to be an interesting challenge for Coach Missoula to figure out because yeah, White and Brogdon sure have been better. It's, it's clear as day to me that they've been better. They've just been better. And out of the three of them, White's been the best. So when it comes down to the meaningful minutes at the end of the game, this is something you can't get wrong. And Smart shouldn't be in there just because he's Marcus Smart. If he's not performing to the high level of expectations we have for a Marcus Smart on the defensive end and running point guard, you got two guys who need to be in the game uh, that that are effective and have shown consistency throughout. There hasn't been inconsistency with those two. Uh, so I give I give Smart about a C minus this year because I don't think he has been close to what he was last year. Uh, now if we took if we if you talk to me during the first half of the season, we'd be talking about a B plus or an A, but something's wrong with him. Um, and hopefully this week he's going to get back to who he is because if he's effective and he is Marcus Smart the first half of the season, then you can make the argument that he is better than Derek White. Well, I, I he is better he's than Malcolm Brown. like that over the last two weeks. To his credit, I, I, I do think he's gotten back to a lot of that type of basketball over the last two weeks. Um, so hopefully, hopefully yeah. that continues. And it, same with Grant Williams. If you spoke to me during the first half of the season, it's an A plus really. I mean, the guy came in with ball handling skills. He came in passing the ball. Well, he came in defending at a high level. Uh, he was rebounding at a high level. He was shooting lights out and something. I don't know if it was a pressure of getting paid or whatever. Um, I don't know how you give him a good grade. He doesn't get a good grade for me, whatever, call to see. I don't know. But his attitude looks like it sucks right now, if we're going to be honest. He bitches to the refs. People get on Jason Tatum. At least Wait, Jason not, Tatum yeah. is a top five player in the NBA. Uh, there was a, This is the last game of the season, so I guess it doesn't matter. But in the first quarter of that game, when he came in against Atlanta, uh, he flopped. And then he sat on the ground and didn't get back on defense. And Atlanta got a fast break layup. And this is to me like, do you want to play in the playoffs? Do you want to be part no. of the rotation? Because Sam Hauser looks like he does. It's a conversation so, for the offseason, but I, I really wonder about his future on this team. Absolutely. Yeah. And I wonder about what his future looks like in the NBA because to me, he he feels like a guy who thinks he's way better than he really is. And I'm not sure where that came from, but um yeah, I'm really disappointed in what happened to him down the stretch. And I I know I blamed Coach Mazula quite a bit for not playing him, but maybe there was something to it. Maybe there was a reason he wasn't playing. And I think we're kind of seeing it. And and he talk about talk about not getting the one seed. You can say he lost him a game this year. You know, going to the free throw line and talking chip before he got to the line and then missing both free throws against yeah. Cleveland. So I don't know if I'm being too harsh on Grant. Maybe I am, but I think it was – if there's a player that had the most disappointing season on the Celtics team was him. And then um, my quick MVP pick, Jim, is Giannis. I know he's not oh. going to get it. 
I know he doesn't have a chance of getting it, uh, but I think he was the best player on the best team in the regular season. Um, he put up incredible numbers that are historic, um, like Will Chamberlain type numbers. Uh, that's only been done two or three times with the 25, 10 and five uh, might be more than 25 points a game. Um, I know the easy pick is Embiid, but uh, I'm in the same boat. I agree with JJ Redick that I think this year uh, Giannis has been the best player in the NBA. Yeah, I, I think I'm still going with Embiid. I think Embiid's been the most dominant player and um, the most important player. Philly doesn't survive or even make the playoffs without Embiid. Um, I think, you know, Milwaukee finds a way to squeak in. They're, they're a little bit better of a squad. Giannis is deserving. Jokic is deserving. I think um, I think Embiid's been awesome. I, I just think he's been awesome. I think he's the most dominant player in the league. And um, I think it's his time, you know, uh, too. It's how many second, third places are we going to give the guy? Uh, and he, it, the one improvement in his game that I thought he, he really lacked was can he play 48 minutes? You know, can he be a factor of a high leverage game towards the end of the game? Twice against the Celtics, he was dominating late in the fourth quarter. That's a scary thing. That's a scary thing, especially as we go into the playoffs. Um, Defensive player of the year, I got Jared Jackson Jr., um, just deserving. He's been great all year. Memphis has been a solid team all year. Sixth player of the year, um, I know Emmanuel quickly is going to get some love, but he did most of his um, damage as a starter as opposed to a bench player. So I I think it has to be Brogdon, in my opinion. Um, I have no idea our most improved player. I don't even know how they grade that out. You know, Half the time it comes to a guy off an injury, which is always weird to me. Uh, yeah, defensive player of the year, I have no idea. Um, they just give it to a big guy, and I think that's dumb. I heard Brooke Lopez might get it, and I think that's fucking insane. Um, so sure, Jared Jackson Jr. I didn't do my my research on this. I wanted to pick a guard because uh, I think it's harder to defend wings and guards in the NBA than it is. To just stand well, that's why I like Jared defense. Jackson Jr., because he can defend wings and guards. Yeah. He's really um, awesome. Six man of the year, I agree. It's Malcolm Brogdon. I will give quickly some credit. I mean, he played a lot of games off the bench too and still put up a high volume of scoring, but I, I just think Brogdon's better. I think he's a better player. Um, and most improved, um, I, I'd give it to Derek White. That's who I'd give it to. I think Derek White should win most improved player in the NBA this year. So that's my pick. Yeah, and I, I don't have an opinion on coach of the year. I don't. I probably because they just don't care about that award that much. Oh, come on. Give it to the guy in soccer. It's, it's Mike Brown. Oh, right? yeah, it's it would, have to, be, it would have to be Mike Brown. Yeah, it yeah. would definitely have to be Mike Brown. Um, so, all right. So, Mike, hey, why don't we close shop? All right. And I think Thursday we'll we'll get back on this. We'll know who the Celtics going to face. So we can make some playoff predictions and, and break down the first round of the playoffs between the Celtics and either the Heat or the Atlanta Hawks. All right, see ya.